Okay, so just scrying the aether of Zax. And let's see. All right, so the first thing I'm seeing is the uh, octahedron that I saw at the noon scrying. And the four corners are just coming down about me. And it's like they're trying to lift me up and succeeding and lifting me up in the astral form just through a straight vertical line. So it's like I'm going straight through the uh, octahedron slash hyperoctahedron. And it's just sort of going up, up, up. And interestingly, it's reminding me of um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in that final scene where he's up, going up, up, up through the air like Willy Won with Willy Wonka. So that's pretty cool. So, one moment. Okay, so I'm being taken up and I'm being just told to just pause for a moment and just really hold this hyperoctahedral form and just re really remembering gratitude and love for all beings and especially for the divine, which I'm doing. And yeah, the governors are just coming in. They're sort of working on my subtle body, uh, specifically my root chakra. And really they're trying to get at a very deep heart of the root chakra. So they're doing that. So this is a bit of a parallel to the work that they were doing at the noon scrying, where it was the very heart of the heart chakra. And then I'm feeling like just a bunch of stuff fall away. So this is very similar to the first two scryings where this hyperoctahedral form, like I'm able to maintain it, but there's a whole lot of unnecessary stuff just falling away. And this is not uncommon for Zach's, where just like that last vestige of nonsense narratives goes away. And yeah, so I'm just trying to ease into this. So they're showing me now um, four uh, lines coming out the square portion of the octahedron slash hyperoctahedron, but it's spinning around uh, a bit like a top and there are four lines and those are just, you know, extending out in all directions. But it's got this very um, party-like atmosphere. Um, this sort of was happening over the noon hour, just sort of whirling about. It's almost like, you know, you can see light coming out those ends and sparks and all of that. Um, the colors are kind of reddish with the, the line segments that form the hyperoctahedron slash octahedron. Those are more golden. And the sense I'm getting is, is that, okay, you know, concentrating on this, it's like there's that push of both um, the... So we have the three day um, planets or the three most important plan planets in a day chart, Mars, Jupiter, and the Sun in Hellenistic astrology, Mars being the out of sect, it's actually of the night sect, but it's sort of pushing and firing this uh, up, but it's held together by this golden uh, uh, strength and stability of the Sun. And then the upward motion is Jupiter in the form of Chesed or Tzedek, just uh, the mercy of God upon us to, for him to lift us up. So I'm seeing this and it's like, okay, now I'm actually being raised up through these many meta levels of the abyss or these abyssal planes. And it's just, that's the sense is that, you know, next stop, you know, you know, maybe a little bit of the final aether, but yeah, I remember getting uh, quizzed about this once by somebody, and, you know, the question is, you know, where, well, the ninth aether, that's really more uh, of zip, that's more um, the, you're beyond the abyss at that point. It's like, eh. <laughs> I, in my experience, you did still need to concentrate in order to get past some of the leftovers. It was about like the first, it's been about the thir first third of the vision every time I've gone back to that, which I'll do tomorrow and I'll be able to report back again. So at any rate, um, it, the sense I get is that I'm through most of these or at least the vast, the majority, 
so perhaps two thirds, who knows, but just another sense that um, that final transrational part, you still need to like come up and like get through perhaps, or just allowing there to be a transrational part, allowing there to be, once you get this vision, once you do the ninth aether call, you're up in, you're, you're, you're suddenly in the supernals, you're getting this big influx of Bina um, consciousness, and you have the vision, in my case, of the daughter of fortitude is what I call her, rather than Crowley's name. Um, I really prefer that name, the daughter of fortitude, but regardless, uh, Bina, in all her Shakti-like glory, really just appears in just a wonderful divine feminine. Um, and I'm kind of looking forward to that tomorrow. So I'm trying to see if there's anything else, but really it's just a, a more general view compared to the first two times I scribed this today. And that's okay. You know, I figure the angels have different visions for different people at different times. So the fact that this is going to be seen much more widely, most likely, um, then I'm, I wouldn't be at all surprised that there's certain things they want to get through in a video form. And if people are interested enough, they can go to the blog. Um, all right. So I'm asking if there's anything else and the angels are saying, no, that's it. So rather short, but thus ends the vision of Zach's.